I am Mark McKinnon. So I am the uh, owner uh, of Discummy Publishing Company, as well as the designer of uh, Big Eye Small Mouth, our best RPG, Anime 5e, of course, that that's the TriStat system with uh, Bessem, so it does include TriStat Core and Absolute Power uh, and all of the TriStat mini box sets as well. So I've been doing game design since 1997, which is when I published my first uh, Bessem first edition. Of course, I've done game design before that, but nothing was published. This was just stuff I had fun doing on the side. I was, you know, I've been a game designer since I was probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old. Um, posting stickers over my Monopoly board to create my own board game. I remember the, the first board game that I can remember in my head was uh, I was in the BMX um, biking back then. And so I made a, well, it was a complete Monopoly clone, but it was about BMX biking instead. Uh, so that was probably my first design that I can remember. But I've moved on to RPGs is my primary mode. Yes, I've done some, some board games as well, but RPGs is probably what I'm best known for. Uh, although the... Um, the one I received the Origins Award is actually for a card game. That was a Sailor Moon collectible card game. But that was based on the work I did for the RPG. So uh, it all it all ties back to Tristat system. And now the expanded Anime 5e, which is uh, something that I'm, I'm really quite happy with. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this now is because we're doing the Anime 5e expansions Kickstarter for the world setting and the monster uh, compendiums. And so I thought it'd be great to, to come on and answer some questions about that, talk a little bit about what we're doing, and go from there. So... With, uh, I'll start off with that, uh, the Anime 5e Kickstarter. So when we did, in two years ago, we did a Kickstarter, almost two years to the to the month, certainly, when we did Anime 5e. And that was taking the, kind of the, some of the point-based structure that we knew from Bessem, and then kind of reanalyzing and reimagining 5th edition. Dungeons & Dragons, obviously, a huge game, that's what I, you know, I grew up with uh, playing in the old red box set is where I got started. But I thought we could bring the, some of the, the best of best and more anime gaming into anime 5e. And so two years ago, we ran the Kickstarter and it was uh, tremendously successful, kind of surprised all of us. Uh, I don't think um, I expected 8,000 people to, to back the Kickstarter. Uh, kind of blew me away a little bit what's going on. And I think a combination of a number of different things was was happening at the time. You know, we will certainly all getting a little antsy with the uh, the pandemic lockdown was still at the beginning. Who knew how long it was going to go on, of course, uh, as well as uh, it was novel and new and different at the time. And since then, obviously, lots of other games have come out, some very successful ones like Avatar uh, RPG was extremely successful, but it took about a year or so to actually fill the Kickstarter, fulfill it, which was uh, much longer than I had anticipated. But there were, uh, I don't know if you've been following at all, the massive global uh, disruption of shipping and timing delays, which pushed everything back. I mean, obviously it was no one's fault, but uh, the fulfillment was uh, less than a year ago happened around May, June, July last year. Is that's when we fulfilled the Kickstarter. So although it was a two-year-old Kickstarter for Anime 5e core rules and you know, game screen and character folio and a couple of smaller other items like that, it's actually only been out for less than a year. Fast forward to now when we're doing the expansions Kickstarter. So one of the things we like to do whenever I do Kickstarters, because shipping is a factor, and we know that it's expensive. Uh, shipping costs have gone up dramatically, uh, even through postal service, uh, certainly courier system. So whenever we do a Kickstarter, we like to kind of hold back a bunch of different books and volumes and designs and release several of them in one Kickstarter, because that allows us to have a more effective shipping options. So if we released, if we did a Kickstarter for a single expansion, and then three months later did another Kickstarter for another expansion, and then another one, all of the same system, uh, we would have to charge a shipping charge on every single one. And it just doesn't make sense to that. So we've been working for the past two years uh, on Anime 5e, because it was practically done two years ago, even though it took a year to fulfill the Kickstarter. And we've been saving up some of the work. And then this is why the Kickstarter actually has six products. This is probably our biggest Kickstarter in terms of the number of, of products, the number of pages that we have in it. Uh, and obviously, Absolute Power, our superhero RPG was also huge. That was a really big one. But we had two core books that was you know, almost 700 pages combined. So that was one of the reasons it was a large one. But with the Anime 5, we have six distinct products uh, that we have running on that. And we think it's it'll be a great addition for people's Anime 5e games, their, their D&D games, if they're using some of the Anime 5e aspects. 
Most of the, the products, of course, are designed specifically for Anime 5e. So we have a monster manual that we call Monstrum Libri, which is just it's Latin for monster book. There are so many names for monster manuals. We had to choose something that was a little original and, and a little different, but still familiar, which is why we went with Monstrum Libri. And so that particular volume, while it's specifically Anime 5e, you can still use the ideas of the monster, but if you're not familiar with Anime 5e stats, you're not going to be able to just plug it into your player's handbook. Unlike, say, something that we have of the multiverse maps, which is just a box set of, of nine different maps, like this one behind. This is specifically for Bessem, so this one is not part of the, the Anime 5e one because this is part of the Bessem multiverse, but those maps can be used in any campaign if you have a, just a map that you can represent, but it is specific to our anime setting, which we call Fulstavia. So the six different products that we have in the Kickstarter right now, just run it through quickly. So it's Fulstavia, which is our setting book. That is, uh, it outlines our entire world that we have. We have uh, eight different continents, uh, Arch Archipelago in there as well. And each of the continent represents a different subgenre of fantasy. And we did that just so that we're not having an entire world on one fantasy genre and someone says, well, I like steampunk fantasy and your entire core world of your official setting is high fantasy and so I'm not interested in it. So we did an interesting blend to represent the different types of anime as well as the different different playing styles that people have. It's that's to have every continent focused on a different type of anime, whether it's uh, horror or, or dark uh, anime. We, uh, you know, vampires and think think Ravenloft in D&D &D terms. We have your high fantasy, we have steampunk fantasy, low fantasy, apocalyptic fantasy. We, we, we've covered everything uh, in the nine different continents. So it all works together in a single world and, and we even, even have some aspects that you can bring in and, and partner it up with your other third party worlds like or maybe Forgotten Realms or or Dragonlance or any other ones that we have um, isekai type adventures and interactions so it's really easy to integrate other worlds into our official Fulstavia setting as well. So that was a lot to say for the very first supplement we have is Fulstavia. Then we have the Monstrum Libri which is a book of monsters pretty standard monster manual. But going along with that, we actually did a card version of it. We called the Creature Cards because uh, it can't be Monstrum Libri because that specifically is Monster Book. So Creature Cards takes all of the same information that we had in Monstrum Libri for all the stats and all the uh, images and puts them on four by six index cards. So it's a really handy uh, tool to use at a gaming table. If you, if you work in those formats, you can use the cards or you can use the book, but of course they work really well together. So those are the three of the supplements and then we have origin story which is a back random background character generator and if you're familiar at all with the uh, creative casting book uh, that they came out with task force games i think it was a, quite a while ago like 30 years ago that was such a, an inspirational book for me for creating interesting randomly generating backgrounds for your characters so we're we've kind of done a little bit of an update on that, but also made it specific to Anime 5e. And so you have uh, Origin Story, which is your background generator. And then rounding out for the final two, we have a box set of the maps from Fulstavia. So that's nine Fulstavia maps in a single box, like this one here, but specific to Fulstavia of the uh, the nine continents. And the great thing about this that one, unlike the Bessa Multiverse, which all of these were are separate worlds, like this is a world map for uh, Icarus. This is, is not a continent, it's the entire world or the main part of the world at least. What we've done with the Volstavia map set is we actually have the entire world in a three by three grid or nine different maps where of this side you can put them on the wall and it's pretty well like like a six or seven by by five panoramic view of all of the the entire world on that you can take an individual continent and use it by itself with a single map but if you put them all together on the on the wall then you have the entire world which is which is pretty sweet i gotta say uh, and then the last number six and that's an adventure that we have set in Fulstavia, but you don't need Fulstavia to, to have it the, the adventure does stand on its own if someone just had the anime 5e core book or even D, &D. If, if you had just D, D, you can probably use the adventure as it is so uh anyway that's kind of a, a quick uh, or long introduction of what the uh, Kickstarter currently we have going on for Anime 5e. Uh, thanks to everyone who's backed it so far. We're well into the stretch goals. We've uh, 
across the the mark we're right now in the slow period as is normal for every kickstarter that i've seen and certainly every kickstarter that we've done anime five we had a little bit more energy in the middle but that's uh because it was you know one of those exceptional very large kickstarters but most of our kickstarters have this you know two and a half week lull in between you get the pledges at the beginning pledges at the end but we're really happy where it's sitting right now and uh, we'd love to have more people jump on so that was one of the, the, the reasons why I, uh, I wanted to have this, was to talk about Fulstavia. Uh, I'm just going to go through some of the comments here, and just to see, uh, I obviously haven't been looking at that, see if there was any particular comments that came up uh, that needs to be addressed. Uh, yeah, Milo, you know, having a Fulstavia map in the background. Oh, see, it's coming up on this side. Um, yeah, it's made sense. We we don't have those printed out. Uh, we have a lot of the maps ready to go. But one of the reasons, unlike previous Kickstarters, where, I mean, if people know us and have been around with our Kickstarters for a while, we usually fulfill the PDFs really quickly after the Kickstarter ends because everything's finished. But with this one, while the work is done, we're waiting on some art assets and some uh, cartographic assets that have held us up a little bit, which is why things are pushed out a little bit further. Yes, we, we could have printed a map, but I had this one handy and I thought it was pretty to show it off. Also, we're going to be talking about uh, the Bessa Multiverse Kickstarter as well. Um, the uh, Milo, you posted about when you'd be converting Bessem and Absolute Power things in Anime 5e. So no, that's not part of the goal is to do a straight translation. That's not to say you can't have, you know, a particular species transition over. For example, we have a Necogen cl uh, class template uh, or race template in Bessem. And in Anime 5e, we also have a race or species template for the Necogen. So you could say that's a translation uh, or a conversion, but they're really kind of uh, archetypes uh, in anime. But we are not planning to do direct conversions over. That may change. Uh, people may be liking some of the content we do for one line, but they want it statted out for something different. We could do that. In the past, a long time ago with Guardians of Order, when I was doing that, we did a lot of straight translations. So we did, when we did Game of Thrones, for example, we did a Tristat D20, exact same product. Uh, Slayers, we did a similar thing. Uh, so some of the books we did the duel, but on this one, we're planning on keeping them separate because the nature of what is important, we think, to a fifth edition player is not the same as a tristat player uh, they they are functional functionally different we have besom set up as a multiverse that's not to say we don't have a multiverse for anime 5e because it does kind of exist you could have a multiverse if you're playing DD, &D, you know there's planescape and dragonlance and forgotten realms and you can bring them all together in a single multiverse and you have different planes whether it's a fiendish plane or you know, the uh the celestial planes the astral plane, ethereal plane. So yes, you can have a multiverse, but the the difference is that we specifically have Falstavia, which is our core anime 5e setting as a planet, a world, whereas multiverse is what Bessem is really good for. You can play an entire uh, campaign in, in just a city or one world without using the multiverse, but the multiverse aspect of Bessem was really fundamentally important, and it's less important anime 5e uh, for what we're trying to do. So different different target market, I think, for the players, which is why the product's going to be a little bit different. Um, so uh, Ben, yeah, thanks for about the, uh, the central casting. Yeah, I called it creative casting. I did mean central casting. The, that, that book that was for the fantasy one in particular, I remember I was, you would roll up characters in high school with people that did not play D&D, &D, but we just wanted to generate an interesting background character. So we never statted them out. All we did was just roll up interesting backgrounds. I mean, it's such a great book. And I've been wanting to bring that to our games for a while, like that type of book. And in fact, if you might have been following some of the things that we've been saying over the past couple of years on either... Uh, video opus like this or on social media, we had originally planned to do an origin story for Bessem. That was the very first origin story we we're going to do. And Robin, our creative director, started working on that. And we, we quickly, well, maybe, maybe not quickly enough, but we did realize that there's a problem doing it for Bessem. And two main problems. One is the scope of Bessem, given it's a multiverse. We wanted to cover, have an origin story that covered every multiverse genre of, of the, all the prime worlds that we had. Very difficult to do one random generated book that covers everything from science fiction, space opera, high fantasy, post-apocalyptic. That was a daunting task. Secondly, uh, I, I kind of shackled Robin when I said, we only use D6s in Tristat, so make every table D6 oriented. I mean, you can use multiple C6s if you need to, and you can do nested tables. 
not a good idea. That was a little bit of a nightmare. So we shelved that product, unfortunately, although the uh, you know, it was an interesting idea to try. It did show us that that maybe isn't as good with TriStat with the, the confines that we gave it. So when, we, uh, when I took over the project for Origin Story for Anime 5e, it was suddenly so much easier. I have polyhedral dice, so I can have D100 tables, D20 tables, D12 tables, so much easier. And then making it specific for one genre, fantasy, although yes, we have different, you know, high fantasy, steampunk, horror, it's still fantasy. And so it was a lot easier to do origin story. And that central casting was uh, integral. We, we didn't want copies what central casting did, but, you know, obviously we took a lot of cues on uh, how they set it up where you're going to have a society, you're going to have a culture, you're going to have a background, a home world uh, or, or home um, land that you're born in. And those will modify some of the future roles so that if you're destitute, if you're poor, if your character doesn't have a lot of money, they're not going to have necessarily the same range of results uh, as someone who was born to a wealthy family. And this is something that uh, you know we've accounted for. If you're familiar with Central Casting, fantastic book. Uh, if you're not, encourage you to look into it or better yet um, back our Kickstarter and get origin story which you can use with D&D although it's best with anime 5e uh, we're going to be providing some guidance in there on how to use some of that aspect with D&D as well uh, or any fifth edition game so thanks for for that comment Ben appreciate that um, HR you asked about how long the the Kickstarter run for Falstavia so it is running until May the 4th Thursday when we run a Kickstarter we've kind of got in the habit of starting it on a Tuesday and ending it 23 days later on the Thursday. We find that kind of works for us on what we're doing, so it will run into May. Uh, if you can back it then, that, that's great. Obviously, we don't want anyone to stretch further than is they're comfortable with. We certainly don't want anyone to get in a position where they're backing uh, something out of obligation to you know our company where you know they really should be... Uh, directing those finances to something else, whether it's a different Kickstarter or uh, something else that they have planned. But uh, we're going to have, as all the Kickstarters that we do, we do have a backer kit later. So people pledge for a dollar, they're in the system, and then they can tailor uh, later if they need be. Of course, the advantage of, of people pledging, because people have asked, can I pledge now or pledge later? No problem with pledging later. Uh, you know, back for a dollar, I always encourage that just to get into the, the system for backer kit. But anything that comes out uh, goes towards stretch goals only during the Kickstarter. So it, we may have a significant number of backers coming later, but that doesn't play out with stretch goals just because we, you know, it's not easily trackable. So uh, so thanks for it, Uh Jason, you asked about guides for designing an anime, anime dungeon. Um, without a doubt, the best advice I can get is watch anime shows that involve dungeons. I mean, as simple as that. The If you're playing anime 5e, if that's kind of the question you're looking at, the, the tropes that are in Dungeons and & Dragons and then scale them up to an anime fight, um, that's fairly easily done. Uh, it's If you're familiar with D&D, an anime D&D is not significantly different, but bringing in the anime 5e rules does present a few different challenges that you won't see in, in Dungeons and & Dragons. And an example I keep going back to it, because I remember it so well when I was playing it, where you know we're, we're going into the dungeon, we're down into an area of, of the crypt, and there's this giant underground lake. And in the center of the lake is there's a small island, and there's a magical crown on the island that we had to get to. And we spent a couple of hours figuring out how to get to the island to get the crown. Where in anime 5e, if you're playing a half dragon, well, you just fly and you get there. Like, it's not an issue. Yes, obviously, wizards have access to fly spells, perhaps, maybe not at first level. But some of the this different species choices that are in anime 5e change the dynamics because some things are so easy. Uh, same with... Um, hard hard reaches so if you have come to a cliff and it's like oh who brought their their rope and you got your pythons and you got your grappling hooks and you have to climb a, a scale it where if someone's playing an arch fiend well they might be like eye level because they're huge they might be 30 40 feet tall just eye level at the top of the cliff so it does change it a little bit now that's if you're talking about anime 5e if you're talking about besom dungeons that's a very different type of beast because it doesn't besom doesn't follow the traditional D and D style of kind of, I guess maybe uh, you know hunting down monsters, killing them and taking their stuff. I mean that's very common with a lot of D and D games. And while our anime game games that we publish, whether it's anime five E or Bessem, kind of don't really lean towards that. 
uh, anime 5e leans it towards it a lot more than Bassam does where Bassam is I mean I've in all the so many games that I've played at Bassam and I run them and play tested dungeons just don't play much of a factor we're often on streets or on a ship or on a, on a spaceship uh, and dungeoneering doesn't come in there and so if you're looking for specific advice about how to play an anime dungeon I would say an anime dungeon isn't a lot different than a regular style dungeon in whatever game you're looking at with the difference that some of the the powers that the characters have can make some of the traditional challenges a little different and maybe not as straightforward you know moving silently isn't an issue when you can easily create a bubble of silence around you uh because of the way it works right and so those are some of the things i'd suggest um so thank thanks for that question uh okay and beyond um uh, oh yeah jason freeze the lake yeah of course you can freeze the lake that's a good point uh, Crystal, you say, if you want to make a game a uh, homebrew of Sailor Moon style, easier with anime 5e or Bessem. Undoubtedly Bessem. And the reason why I know that is Bessem is, you know, I've done that before. Uh, when we did the Sailor Moon role-playing game and resource book, that was the second major book that I wrote, and that was based on Bessem first edition. Uh, we tweaked it since then, but that was back in 1998. That was the, the first... Uh, license that I ended up getting. That was the uh, you know the project that kind of launched us on the map. Even though Bessem was what we're known for, the, Sailor Moon was the one that kind of solidified for us. And Tristat worked perfectly well for that. Anime Five E, while you could adapt it, the inherent limitation of a class-based system doesn't apply itself as well to a lot of anime shows, particularly licenses, because the licenses, unless you're your, your license is like Record of Lotus War, in which case it's very anime, uh, very D&D. &D. Um, a lot of the anime shows don't really work that way, and they're not class-based. They're not as restricted as what Dungeons & Dragons is. Now, it's not, that's not a knock against D&D. &D. It's just they're, they're not created from that, where the flexibility of Bessem's point-based, total freeform system allows you to create the characters that you want. And... Um, Without giving away too much, I can say that, yes, 4th edition Bessem absolutely can design Sailor Moon characters. No doubt about it. We, in the future, will be doing something with Magical Girls more than what we have done with the Tristat system. Uh, so, yeah, it could definitely be done that way. Uh, all right, so now that I've answered some of those, thank you. It gave me a chance to, to catch up on the comments. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Bessem Multiverse Kickstarter. This is the Kickstarter that's already end, ended. That was at the end of last year. We fulfilled all the digital rewards. That's done. And the idea was that they would be uh, shipping in the summer for the physical awards. Well, what I can say is that we have just recently received the print copies. The, these are the advanced copies that we get of the uh, the four different products that we're offering in Bessem Multiverse Kickstarter. This is so exciting. In fact, you could see the reflection of the UV coating that was a stretch goal uh, that uh, the the backers helped get that. So this here uh, is the Bessem Multiverse book. That is gorgeous. It looks so good. Of course, if you have the PDF, you already know what it looks like. But, uh, you know, holding it in your hands is, is just pretty sweet. And so that's the Bessem Multiverse. The second product that comes along, and I'm sorry about all the shaking. Obviously, when I touch the table, the, uh, the, the desktop moves as well. Uh, Eurasia, Grave of Heaven. So this is the setting book. It is not the multiverse. In fact, it's interesting because the multiverse covers seven different dimensions or, or worlds. This covers a single world. They're the exact same size and page count. Because this goes into a lot more detail. You'll have an entire chapter of 10 pages on a town of a couple of thousand people. Like it's Eurasia, if anyone's familiar with, with Eurasia from Second Edition Bessem or anything that S. John has done with Cumberland Games uh, over the years since it was Second Edition Bessem, you'll know how different this type of book is. It is amazing and just like uh, you know, Bessem Multiverse, you know, gorgeous, looks the same, fits in. You know, so this, they look like they belong side by side with each other, right? So these two books, the hardcovers, I got those. Really happy with that. And then the multiverse maps. And so you'll see that this is a box of these types of maps. So if I uh, show you the, the back of it. Now, unlike the books, this is not on drive-thru. You don't have a PDF of this. 
these are just maps. Of course, you don't have the PDFs. All of these maps are in BESA Multiverse, so you have the PDFs of the maps. But what we have in this one is inside the box is a package of maps. All these maps, they're each running uh, 30 inches by 24 inches, I believe is, a, is the size of them, uh, banded up. And then there's also a sheet. This was a stretch goal that came in. This is a, just a sheet of different uh, cities and landmarks that you can use if you want to mark up your maps. So, you know, while all the maps in the multiverse have, you know, titles and have different places and you'll see the, the borders that are on some of them, uh, if they have national borders, they will include them. But the stickers here, you can make your own custom places. And so that is a box set of maps. This is really sweet. This is great for any game. Uh, doesn't You don't have to play within the best of multiverse to use a map of you know, uh, uh, Karis, for example, you could use it in a D&D game and say, we're running D&D based on Karis, and you know nothing about it, you're just using a map. But they're, they're really nice maps, very happy with uh, how they look. And so uh, that is the, um, the six different prime worlds. And then we include two other maps. One of them was Eurasia, which uh, is from the Eurasia expansion. And then we have a bonus eighth map. And that is from, again, a stretch goal. And that is of one of the cities that we have, Shadow River, which is from Eurasia. So it's just a, a, an entire city in one single map. S. John had a really good map of it, and it'd be a shame not to print it in a large format. And so uh, that was one of the stretch goals you unlocked as well. And then the final of the, the four products is Ikarian Gate. Now, this is my, uh, you know, me, Mark McKinnon, but uh, also Discomi, first novel publication. So I've done with uh, Path of the Just and Path of the Bold for Absolute Power back for Silver Age Sentinels. They were anthologies for superheroes. And we are going to be doing another anthology of superheroes that's going to be coming out uh, for Absolute Power. But uh, so I've done fiction before but this is my first novel so it's kind of neat this is the lit rpg if you're not familiar with lit rpg you know look online for what it is uh, basically the characters in the novel have besom stats because uh, you don't have to know besom but they have game stats and they're in a game world there's lots of anime like that 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 you use that uh, certainly it has an isekai aspect it has um kind of a gaming type aspect so with this we got the uh wraparound cover and of course it's a dust jacket and just like most novels you know you have nice foil lettering on there and it's there's nothing on the book itself but on the spine uh, that there is so that's a carrying gate and so yeah this is uh the first novel i published so it's pretty neat this gummy is a music producer we've done two soundtracks we're now a novel publisher as well as well as the uh, a cartographing company so it's kind of neat the, the diversity of stuff that we have and the reason why i wanted to show this tonight this is really bugging me here um i didn't think it was going to be a problem but i guess uh, uh it was rolled up for so long that it wants to unroll but the, the reason I wanted to, to talk about all those tonight is because these four books, we've received the advanced copies, we've approved them, and so now they're getting ready to ship from the factory in China. And we're ex expecting it's going to be beginning of May. It does take a little bit of time to you know get everything to the port and get a ship booked and get it in the containers. But right now we're working with a freight broker who should be able to get us uh, on the road, uh, on, on the ocean in early May. And then from there... It'll go overseas to uh, eventually land Vancouver or L.A. or kind of two of the larger ports uh, on that side and then train over and then uh, get on a truck and finally get to our warehouse. And then when it's in our warehouse, then we got to repackage everything and ship it out. So that is going to be happening. We expect if everything goes well, you look at you typically estimate two to three months, depending on what's happening with shipping. Fortunately, things are significantly better than they were a year ago and a lot better than they were two years ago. So we're we're optimistic. Let's just put it that way. We're optimistic that maybe there won't be any strikes. There won't be any COVID uh, or any pandemic related COVID. We know that COVID's not gone, but the, the pandemic aspect of it seems to be uh, waning. And so if everything goes well, we're still in the June, July time frame which is when we anticipate it so this is not going to be a late kickstarter this is going to be a roughly on time kickstarter uh which is wonderful and we made sure we 
built in appropriate amount of time for that. So those four products are, are more or less are ready to go. Uh, we're so excited. I, you know, I'd love to be able to give them out to everyone right away, but I don't get unlimited copies of advanced copies. This is just a, that we get here in the office to have the final look. And, uh, you know, whenever they come in, we get so excited whenever they arrive because, yes, we've looked at proofs many times where they'll send color proofs and black and white proofs and, and proofs of uh, foil stamping and proofs of UV coating. But this is our first actual post-production copies and really exciting to see. So yeah, we're excited to get that out. The backer kit, almost everyone has done it. There's obviously, obviously, uh, always a few stragglers that don't do it. And in fact, <laughs> just last week, someone contacted us about Anime 5e, said, hey, I haven't received my Anime 5e PDF that you sent two years ago. So uh, we know backers are sometimes they have stuff on their minds. Some of you will back a lot of games, uh, but most people have followed through with Bessem and finished the backer kit. So when we close that down, uh, not going to be an issue for most people. If you have any address changes, we're going to be sending out to all backers. We're going to get our any address changes because we know people have moved in the past maybe six months. But because this product is not late, because it was a much tighter window and we're filling it on time and there's no real delays, uh, we don't expect there to be as many updating problems as that. So yay, we're so excited to get that going. Uh, so thanks to that. So I'm going to scroll back a little bit and just see if there's any other uh, comments that came in. Uh, I see Robin has joined us. So Robin, the uh, creative director of uh, Bessem, uh, or creative director of Discami, working on all of our lines, uh, instrumental in doing Absolute Power, and then picking up for from what I created from the system for Anime 5e and Bessem, and then doing the, the world of the design work from there and a lot of the writing, uh, where Absolute Power, while I did the system, uh, Robin kind of was instrumental right off the bat to uh, to take what we did with Silver Age Sentinels and bring it forward. So uh, thanks for tuning in, Robin. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Jason, if you're wondering if you bought the map pack, obviously you can look in your emails and see that. If you have any questions, if anyone have any questions, like, hey, did I add this to my pack, uh, to, to my pledge? Can you, can you, can I get it now? Just drop us an email, info at discami.ca. If something, if you are missing something and you want to add it, we can always just do a late add-on, uh, send you a PayPal payment request. It's really simple for us to take care of stuff. So no worries uh, if you haven't done it. Uh... All right. Well, that's everything, which is great. Uh, I'm glad I didn't fall behind. So those are kind of the, the, the two main important things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I expected tonight would be an hour, hour and a half, two hours if it, if it went long. But one of the things we want to talk about a little bit uh, now is shift gears and talk about going forward. And this is what the future of Discami is going to be and you know what we're looking at. Because we have the, the Bessel. Uh, line and if you remember back with the Bessem core rules there was a page spread that we out outlined a bunch of expansions coming Bessem multiverse was on there well we were finally we're following through with that it's going to be fulfilled everything on that has been fulfilled with one exception and that's the Bessem LARP and that's going to be somewhat of a problem because um, unlike all the other games where I can create rules we can test it with a local group of players, LARPing requires a lot bigger groups. And the the world is not the same as it was back in 2019 when I was writing Bessem. No one thought anything that social distancing would be an issue or masking or people would, it, would lives would be forever changed by what happened with the pandemic. And so I haven't given up on doing the Bessem LARP, but let's just say it's been put on the back burner because of it needs to get play tested at conventions and needs to get exposure at conventions and we have to get people playing it and it's not it's not the world we're living in now is not the same world as it was three years ago three and a half years ago now i guess so it's the only product from the core besom release that when he announced that we did not finish yet but everything else is, is done so that leaves What's next for Bessem? Absolute power. We launched the core rules and with the game, game screen, the dice, the dice tower, the character folio, like all the, the standard stuff with absolute power. That game launched uh, last year. Then we have some uh, TriStat box sets lines, which we did with, uh, you know, didn't have a, a huge uptake. This is the, the Pixies, Worms, and Demonicity. That was something that uh, we're trying as was a little bit different. It's kind of taking core TriStat and then doing a variation of it. Uh, and going along with that is the TriStat core book, which which is a very different implementation that we had for the box sets, but it's, it's a non-system. So it's not absolute power. It's not 
Bassam, it's not Anime 5, it's not a branded line, it's TriStack Core. So we have that, and we obviously have Anime 5e as well. And so we kind of have what I consider four main product lines. And we've been doing some catch-up from the pandemic and releasing stuff. And so we got Bassam Core Release. We have the Extra uh, expansion pack, which kind of gave some more rules. And now we have the setting with the multiverse. So we got Bassam launched out the door. Absolute Power was just amazing to start out the door, had everything in it. Absol- uh, Anime 5e, we released the core rules to kind of see what that was. And now we're releasing some core expansions with that, you know, getting a monster manual out, getting a world setting out. And so what we're looking is what we did in the past couple of years was the debuting, you know, the core rule book. We released like a you know, Anime 5e core rules, absolute power core rules. Those were fairly substantial releases over the past couple of years. And recently in the past few Kickstarters have been about expansion packs. So here's the, the best of multiverse expansion pack. Here's the Anime 5e Voltav- Volstavia expansion packs. And so I kind of consider now we're in the exploratory phase of what do the fans want? Where where should we be focusing our design time? Because as a small company, uh, you know, from a full-time point of view, it's just Robin and me uh, that are working full-time. Yes, we have freelancers that we tap to, particularly with artists, but also we've worked with some external writers as well, is we do, our, as a small company, we have a limited amount of resources where we're going to spend the time and we need to figure out what people want. And so uh, while I mentioned the Bessem and the Anime 5e kind of expansions, the next one we're doing, uh, you know, an expansion, obviously, Absolute Power. And so we released the core rules last year, but we have that Absolute Power expansions as well going to be coming out. Uh, And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But this will give us an idea of where we some of our focus should be. Because when we have a limited amount of time, there's nothing that we want to abandon. We like all of our, our product lines, but... We, you know, we do have to pay the bills. We have to make sure that we have the fan base that are there. And and if it's a smaller fan base, um, maybe we don't do as many releases for a particular product line. So let's talk about, first up, what's coming next. So release Bessem, Multiverse. We have these six great products for Anime 5e. Now Robin is working on uh, Absolute Power because the next big thing that we're going to be doing is releasing the absolute power expansions and if you've kind of been following a little bit about what we're talking about the on some of the social medias and discords is the because absolute power runs parallel to the real world and the core rules runs up to the end of 2020 so yes the pandemic happened in absolute power um it wasn't some sort of villain plot uh they didn't happen we're it's a very delicate balance to run a superhero fictional rpg in conjunction with what's happening in the real world but we're you know, that's something we wanted to do. We did with SAS uh, back in 2001, and uh, we're doing that now as well with Absolute Power. And so with the Absolute Power expansions, what we're doing is rather than doing like a monster manual or a villain book, I mean, how many superhero RPGs do you know have? Here's a villain book. We didn't want to follow that. What we're doing in call instead are annuals, which somewhat fit into the comic uh, idea. And because we have a, a world setting that is runs parallel with our real world, by necessity, it ha- our real world has to be a little bit more advanced than the, uh, than, the, than the setting. And so what we're doing is we're releasing annuals. So we have a, an Absolute Power 2001 annual coming. We have an Absolute Power 2002 annual coming. And at the beginning of this uh, video, I talked about we'd like to do our Kickstarters, kind of wrap several product at once. It made sense for us to hold back the 2001 annual and release it at the same time as the 2002 annual. So that's what we're Robin's working on now. The, the 2001 annual is done and uh, well into the way of, of, of that 2002 annual. And so the next Absolute Power Kickstarter that's going to come out is going to be a two-year update, two separate books, each one year. And so here's what happened in the Absolute Power world in 2021. Here's what happened in 2022. Uh, Obviously, we know what's been going on in 2021, 2022 in our real world. There's some significant issues, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, some of the things pandemic or Ukraine uh, that's happening. We're not writing historical books. So this is still a role playing game. This is still a work of fiction. So these real world things, if you you read the absolute power core rules, you know, kind of how we integrate um, 
more recent current events uh, into what we're doing. And so they will inform what the uh, the annuals are, but the main focus of the annuals are going to be, here's a bunch of awesome new characters, here's some f character favorites, like we're going to talk about the Untouchables in 2002. In 2001, the Untouchables don't play out, but instead we're bringing in uh, some of the other groups. Uh, we're going to be bringing in you know, Alice's uh, team. We're going to be bringing in some of the academies, or the, the Yamatai Academy, or the Harrison Academy. So these are almost, you can think of uh, Yamatai's, like uh, My Hero Academia, basically a superhero school in Japan. And so these are things that are going to play out. It, it, they're not going to have significant impact to what our real world is that would not be fun to play in i mean no one wants to play in the real world but having it adjacent to what we're doing and informing what we're doing in the superhero fictional universe that happens to be running in parallel with the earth real uh universe that's pretty exciting for us and so the next big kickstarter after this one it's going to be later in the fall we don't have a date yet we still have to make sure we you know everything lines up will be those two books for absolute power and we know there's also going to be the anthology where uh, we have 15 amazing short stories that are going to be going in if you were at all familiar with what we did the silver age sentinels with path of the just and path of the bold we won origins award uh, at the time for uh, that anthology so now we're doing a new anthology which um tentatively path of absolute power is what we're calling it but that could change uh, what we go and so that'll be also part of the kickstarter again wrapping up that multiple products in the kickstarter and we may have one or two other uh, surprises in there we're, we're playing with some ideas but that's kind of the next thing that we're looking at so what's after anime 5e expansions kickstarter well we're looking at the absolute power kickstarter what about the best line? What about the anime 5e line past there? And that's what I, I had talked about, that we need to see where the fan base is and what they want. One of the things we, we uh, because Bessem has big, our, big, been our longest line, it, maybe not the most number of Kickstarter backwards, that was obviously anime 5e, but oh, I think we're, we're best known for Bessem and we have a lot of you know, hardcore Bessem fans and they've been asking for a long time. It was like, where's the monster manual for Bessem? Um, where's uh, this book for Bessem of items or spells or gadgets? We have to decide where we're going to play out with Bessem. And we, we have some ideas. Robin and I have talked many times. The original plan back, if you go back almost 20 years when the multiverse was first planned out, is we had thought we were going to do uh, an individual book for each of the world. And so Bessem multiverse was, here's the world. Uh, and here's the multi-worlds. Here's the different six different prime worlds. We have the outer worlds, the inner, the inner worlds. We have the beyonders. We have the parallel worlds. All that was intended to be in a single book, and that's what we did with Bessa Multiverse. That book kind of is a, a survey of everything. But if you want to get really in-depth on, you know, for example, Akaris, if you want to go high fantasy, the 20 or so pages in Bessa Multiverse really is not up to the task of an entire book on Icarus. And so with the original plan, and we're leaning towards that, is is sticking with that plan of doing books that are based on the individual world that are also representations of a particular genre. And so whenever the initial planning back almost 20 years ago, again, when we first came up with the, the idea of the best of multiverse in the different worlds, was that each world will be a different genre. So Cathedral is space opera. Icarus is high fantasy. Um, uh, Imago, uh, Imago is uh, very much um, reality punk. Um, it's it's near future, but certainly far enough away. You know, it has its elements like you have your your neomorphs, your Pokemon style um, characters there. But all of these are different genres, and so by doing an individual world book on a world of part of the Bessa multiverse, but it's also a reflection of the genre from there. So, yes, we could do the traditional you know, monster manual. Problem with the monster manual is, well, what genre do you do it for? Because if you are running Cathedral, Bessem Cathedral, you do space opera Bessem. Having a fantasy monster manual could be completely useless to you. Or if you're running science fiction, if, if, if we came up with a monster manual of, of gothic horror monster manual, that may not play out to what you want in science fiction. And so rather than doing a discrete monster manual like we've done with the Anime 5e line, because that was very appropriate for 5th edition style players, they're used to monster manuals. And it's a single genre. It's fantasy. Even if there's different subgenres, it's it's fantasy. And so 
we maybe don't think that doing discrete books are a good idea for Bessem, where having the different monsters and items and magic and new rules, if you know there's anything that needs to come up, all of those wrapped into an individual genre, representation of that genre makes the most amount of sense. So if you're running Bessem for science fiction games, then maybe you don't want to get the Icarus world book. You don't need fantasy monsters. You need science fiction monsters. And so you'd be more interested in ones that you can use. Monsters, magical items, gear, all of those things that go along with it. And that's why it's a slightly different approach when you have a multi-genre universal system on what we're doing with that. So we're thinking we're leaning in that direction, but we want to integrate uh, with the fans, uh, you know, uh, interact with you. And I'm going to be asking some questions. Just going to be posting some polls or getting some feelers out on one of some of the things you're looking at for and kind of outlining where you'd like to see the direction go. Because in the end, while we have ideas, there's no sense producing things that you don't want um, because that's not going to be good for us if we waste all that time in doing it. So that will somewhat inform what we're doing. We already know the the, you know, the absolute power. Yes, we could do a, a villain book for absolute power, but an annual one, an annual you know, 2021, uh, 2022 for absolute power annuals, there's going to be a lot of new characters in there, a lot of villains uh, statted out, uh, good guys statted out, as well as all the items, organizations, plus world events, of course. It is a, a living world, a living setting. And so all of those are more holistically integrate into a single volume rather than the discrete, which is typical for fifth edition. So here's a monster book, here's a spell book, um, here's a setting book. And a lot of the fifth edition uh, D&D style are very discrete books where we're taking more of a holistic approach. That's kind of the goal with what we're doing. Uh, and then, as I did mention, yes, I you know we have that other line, which is Tristat line, and I would like to do more. Uh, I you know have lots of great ideas that, of interesting things we could do with the the mini box sets. Problem is, it didn't sell that well. Kickstarter was very light compared to any, you know, one of the, the lightest ones we've done. Uh, didn't have a lot of buy up. They're a little bit expensive for the content volume. Like when you look at what you can get in a core book and the number of pages versus what we do in the box set, when you have dice and you have multiple different products and the box itself, it adds up to it. So we have to charge it a little bit more. Uh, we think the value is there. There's no doubt about it. If, if someone was to go into a store and buy one of those uh, murder mystery boxes that you see, you buy one of those, you run it on a Friday night for your friends and then the game's done. Or maybe an escape room. You buy a game and it's done one use and done um our, our games are not one use and done they do have a lot more value in that but we think the entertainment's there but in comparison to what people expect in the in for uh D, D style books Bessem style books the maybe that's one of the reasons it didn't have as big of an uptake it could be a number of different reasons maybe the the games didn't interest people uh with demonicity worms and pixies uh we think they're a lot of fun and there is at least one more that I'm going to, that I want to do, and that is going to be magical girl oriented. Um, people know that we that I have a long history with Sailor Moon, uh, going back to 1998, and uh, this book is going to be very heavily skewed towards Sailor Moon. I'll just leave it at that for now. So there will be at least one more box set. I would like to do other ones. Oh my gosh, would I ever like to do other ones? Um, but there's a limited amount of time, and in the end, if there's just not as much interest, uh, maybe that's not the direction to go. I, I think it could be a really interesting line. If any of you have, have those box sets and see what we do with TriStat, where it is TriStat, but here's a, a variation. Here's a, a way of looking at TriStat differently. I think they're, they're fantastic explorations of a, a system that is complete as it is. TriStat Core... Absolute Power Tristat or, or Bassam Tristat doesn't need to change a lot, but you can do some really interesting, interesting things with it. And that was one of the, the, the calling points for the, uh, the box sets that I was working on. But we'll see where that goes. But we know what's going to happen next for Absolute Power. We know what's uh, you know, going to happen currently with uh, Anime 5e. And then we have to look at the future. And so part of these Kickstarters, we, we have the, the multiverse, the Bassam multiverse one done. We're doing the Anime 5e setting now we're going to be doing the expansion kickstarter for absolute power and that will give us some information on where we should be proceeding forward as well as of course our interaction with our fans we have some other stuff we're working on but that's kind of where i want to lie lay out where we're going to be going down there i hope that was uh, again kind of give you a little bit of confidence to know that we're we're looking down the road and to give you some insight into our decisions that we have 
So with that, I'm going to take a quick drink while I, I scroll through some of the comments, just see if there's anything I'm missing. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Milo, you mentioned about we should do <laughs> Bessem LARP and, and use area and range enhancements. Uh, you know, I've already worked on some of the system aspect of it. I just have to test it out, right? Uh, and so it's not really in the position that I want to move ahead with it at this time, given everything else that we have. Uh, it's also, we've never, I've never done a LARP book, uh, although I've done free form role playing a lot with Amber Diceless, uh, you know, as a, as a player and as a GM, I've done a lot of that. But LARPing is, is a very different beast. And I want to make sure we get it done correctly if we're going to do that. So uh, let's, let's just a, a back burner project that's uh, it's a thought experiment at this point um oh yeah thanks hr i got afraid about the licensing yes so we've had licensing um progression towards licensing as stretch goals for our anime 5e and our besom kickstarters and i can i can say undoubtedly we've worked on licensing but worked on is where we at at this point. So I've been uh, outright turned down on some of the proposals that we've had. We've had other things that progress to a point and it looks like it's going someplace and then it takes a turn and doesn't come to fruition on that. So licensing is, if people might have followed the things I've said in the past, that licensing today is not the same as licensing 20 years ago. And I, a lot of the licensing I did 20 years ago was uh, very successful with Guardians of Order, but we were working primarily with, with American companies. The integration of the globalization between American anime companies, as an example, if I'm looking at anime, uh, anime companies locally in the US and in Japan are much more heavily integrated than they ever were previously. And uh, we're just not a, a big player. And so um, we've progressed on the licensing but nothing has come to fruition on that. So are, is licensing dead for us? No, no, we're, we're still attempting um, to see where things go. There was several non-anime licensing. We're working with a company and they're like, hey, give us a proposal for this thing. And so we submitted a proposal and they're like, no, this other company, we're going to give it to them. And, you know, a different company gets a license that, you know, I didn't think that we were going to get it, but it was nice and flattering that we were approached to, because I know uh, of our license history and, and what I've done in the past, uh, to at least submit a proposal. And so there are many licenses that I would love to do something on. There are advantage, advantages and disadvantages to licensing. The Anyone that's followed the trials and tribulations of our Sailor Moon Crystal board game line recognizes... Uh, um, how difficult licensing can be on approvals and how incredibly frustrating it can be. But that built-in fan base, that built-in reach, um, the artwork often, you know, comes for free, which is nice. Uh, when we do a book like Absolute Power, when we have to c custom uh, commission every single piece of art, it's very expensive. When you get a license and they're like, oh, here's the 10,000 pieces of art you can use, um, that's pretty awesome. And you pay for it with a licensing fee, of course, it's, it's included in that, but it also ties your hands of what you can and can't do with it. So um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. Thank you, HR. I did want to talk about licensing and I had and forgotten about that. The other, I guess, big thing that has been on Kickstarters and that's the, you know, what's going on with the VTT? What's going on with the VTT? And I understand it's important to a lot of people. Um, I would love to say that we've made incredible progress on it. But again, almost like licensing, we've made several steps forward and we're working with people and we think something's going to happen and then boom, they lose their full-time job and they have to stop working on the VTT for us uh, because they got to focus on a different part of their life. So um, this is one of the few aspects that uh, I personally cannot work on because A, I don't use VTTs, so I don't fully understand them, even though I've tried playing around with them a little bit. And secondly, I don't code like that. You know, all my coding is from, uh, you know, <laughs> university and high school years. So Pascal, Fortran, uh, you know, Cobalt, I could program in those back then, but I don't know the new stuff. Uh, it's just not my skill set. And so I can't work on it myself. I can write a new game book. I can edit. I, there's tons of stuff I can do when it comes to physical books, but I cannot work on the VTTs independently. I have to have other people. And we currently have, we know several people are working on VTTs right now. We've partnered up with Scene Grinder, which is a new player 
in the VTT field. They're just in beta right now. They're going to be launching uh, the product very shortly. They ran a moderately successful uh, Kickstarter last year and they approached us and we got involved with them right off the bat. I've been working with them to have full integration of our Anime 5e right uh, you know, at the beginning. It's Their VTT is very different than World 20 or foundry or anything like that it's a very different feel but it is uh it's one that we're i guess to say the first one maybe we're actually officially partnering with but i know that there are several people on discord and and we've talked to that have contacted us that are working on vtts for some of the different ones whether it's foundry or roll 20 and so we expect to see progress but it's not something that we have a lot of influence directly on and so we're kind of letting the community do what they're doing with the one exception yes we are definitely working directly with scene grinder uh to get uh anime 5e for that and hopefully we've talked about you know tristat as well and besom in the future but right now they're focused on you know because they're just in the launch and anime 5e will be with them uh at launch which is fantastic so those are the kind of the two outstanding things from the Kickstarters, the licensing and the virtual tabletops. So uh, I don't have particularly amazing news on either of those, uh, but I could say we're further along on virtual tabletops than we are in licensing. Licensing has, has stalled out at this point. And we have such amazing stuff that we're doing. We don't need a license. We do have awesome stuff. People they go, oh, well, you know, get this anime license and do an anime book. I'm like, yeah, we could, but we also have awesome Bessa multiverse and amazing anime 5e full stavia so we're doing great anime stuff a license would be wonderful uh and we're gonna keep that on mind so again thanks hr for bringing that up uh oh and right underneath that uh, <laughs> milo you posted about those two uh great minds think alike um, oh, Magic Academy in Anime 5e. Uh, yeah, there's there's some magical groups that we have. We have what's called the factions, uh, anchor factions in Fulstavia. This isn't like, like we're not talking about a school in great detail. These are global organizations. Think of them almost, I don't want to use this, the exact parable, like the Aes Sedai from Wheel of Time, if you're familiar with that. It's a group of mages that have global influence that work on stuff either behind the scenes or very you know front line so we have those types of organizations that are right in full stavia which is great uh, we're not uh, going in great depth on an academy for example but uh, yeah that does that does play a role in there um okay Sorry, it's just jumping around here a little bit when I'm trying to scroll. Um, oh, yeah, Jason, you mentioned about the Dark Fantasy book from 2nd Edition of Bessem and Hot Rods and Gun Bunnies. So, uh, yeah, so they were... Mm, the Hot Rods and Gun Bunnies were the rule expansions where the Cold Hands Dark Heart was more of a setting mood expansion. Uh, and we are looking, as I mentioned earlier, is... Uh, less on the rules books and more on the setting integrated in with genre. And so like Cold Hands, Dark Hearts, that's kind of what Eurasia is in many ways. It's a much bigger version of uh, that uh, from... And Eurasia, Cold Hands, Dark Hearts, Bigger, Small Mouth, Centauri Knights, those were all the second edition Bassam ones. And you know, we brought Eurasia forward. Um, I would love to do, you know, just do more in Centauri Knights. That would be amazing to have a full Centauri Knights campaign setting. But what i want and what the fans would want what's good for the company aren't necessarily the same things and i don't know if there's uh appetite for something like that which is why i think the world slash genre books might be a better way to go but we're going to keep interacting with uh, the community and see what they want uh, okay sailor moon dice challenge will be a season four and five yeah thanks crystal um Sailor Moon license, unfortunately, is over now. And so we did season one, two, and three. We did not We did not have any rights to go beyond season three. And even if we had the license at the time, um, the license is over. So when we first got the Sailor Moon Crystal license, our anticipation was to do an entire line of six, seven, eight, nine different games of different genres, different styles of play. Um, but because our last one, um, the Imposterous, two years it was in approval so we submitted it it was done and then two years later they said okay you can print it 
it, it just ate up all the time for the license, unfortunately. So we didn't have a chance to do another season of Dice Challenge or to do different types of games. Really unfortunate, very problematic from an approval point of view. It caused a lot of delays. We, we think we have three amazing games, but those games, now that they're out, uh, the license is over and we're no longer carrying those games, unfortunately. Uh, Korean Manwa. Um, you know, yeah, we could. Uh, I don't know that I'm watching any of those. Um, I, I've i cut back on a lot of my anime watching. I find, you know, like everything in the world, 90% um, of everything is garbage and 10% is awesome. It's finding that 10%. And, you know, I found some of those shows that are really good, but unfortunately the ones that are really good and that I like as well are very popular. And very popular means either a larger company has the licensing rights or um, they're too expensive or too small of a company, whatever. Uh, something like like a My Hero. My Hero, would, you know, while it's not the best show ever, from a license point of view, oh my gosh, it is Bessem and Absolute Power put together, tons of characters, tons of powers, would be great for Bessem, but that's off the table. That's just not a possibility. And there's many other shows um, that would be possible. The ones I like might not be great for Lysic. I would still love to do a Ranma game. I think I could do an excellent job, but um, for the 10 people that would buy a copy of it, they would really appreciate it. But uh, no, so that's that's not going to happen. A Spy Family or something I've been recently watching uh, a lot. I think it's a great series. Um, probably wouldn't be a great... Bessem game, uh, and certainly it's not a good license for Bessem, but uh, like for a card game or a board game, it would be great. Not as much for a role-playing game. The, I think the, the requirements for a role-playing game, what makes a good anime role-playing game license, is very different than a general game license. Uh, okay, looks like I've caught up on all the comments. Great, thank you. Oh, no. No, I did not. Almost. Okay, and that is... Uh, Jason, you had asked about the third party use tri-stat rules, right? And then, boom, uh, HR, you answered that. That's the Emporium. Uh, the Emporium is something that we worked with uh, drive through uh, as part of the community content um, program to give players uh, and creators access to our system so they can do their own stuff. Going way back 20 years ago, in, when drive through was in its infancy, there wasn't really this PDF mm, kind of infrastructure back then. Uh, it was very difficult to be an independent. I, mean, I have this great idea. I want to publish my home world, uh, my, the, my, my project that I do of my game world with my players and my friends, and I like to publish that for Bessem. There was no really easy way to do that. We tried to work with some stuff, uh, work with some people. We released a few projects. In the end, it didn't quite work out because of the, where we were with uh, the Bessem line at that point. But the drive through is a fantastic way. And HR has produced some, uh, you know, four amazing products, uh, you know, that was for sale uh, and, uh, you know, some other free stuff as well. And it hasn't had a huge buy up uh, or uptake. I thought there'd be more. But in the end, it doesn't matter to me. It's what people want to do. And so we do offer those available uh, with Anime 5D, of course, being part of the uh, open gaming license that there is a, uh, an SRD if people wanted to do their own Anime 5D monster manuals or setting worlds, you know, whatever. That can all be done through your creator content program. So it's call officially called the Anime 5D and TriStat Emporium. It's a long name. But we have two different systems we're kind of supporting through it. So there's I didn't want to have two different Emporium. Well, in fact drive through won't allow a single company to have two different community content programs. So we rolled it into one. Uh, in the end, if you have anything, put it up. Put it up for free, put it up for sale, uh, provided it, it meets our community content guidelines. All of it's on drive through uh, You can download all the information. We provide some of the art. We provide the layout templates. Uh, yeah, we want to make it easier for people to create. So that is out there. So thanks. Uh, Jason, you asked about the pet class in Anime 5 v Can't you evolve the monster pets to higher forms? So, um, if you're talking... So the pet class, if you're talking specifically about companions or minions, um, yeah, they can... They can evolve, and you can get more points by dumping them in there. If you're talking about the pet monster trainer, um, pet monster trainer class in Anime 5 v during class progression, your, uh, companion attribute increase which gives you more points to put towards your uh companion but what we didn't want to get into a situation because i um, mean this is anime 5e and bassam both someone's like well think of a show where 
there's two people like there's a boss and then there's their sidekick and that sidekick is super powerful uh you know i I can't think of any examples off the top of my head um you know that that wouldn't be you know kind of two player characters so not han and chewy or uh lena and gowry from the slayers but we don't it's it's not good for game balance to have a player who's might be say 100 points with a bunch of 80 point minions um that would go along with it 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 just breaks the game balance very much so which is why minions and companions are are really scaled down they're not nearly as powerful pokemon type creatures so think pikachu think of something small uh something that uh you know has a limited power set maybe doesn't have opposable thumbs um so something like that they play really well in besom and anime 5e to have uh pet monsters or uh underlings that you can have maybe goblins for example if you're an anime 5e and you can have a minion of a bunch of goblins but you're not gonna have a minion of a bunch of bugbears or trolls it it's too powerful because you have to look at the impact of action efficiency. I mean, if you have 10 bugbears working for you, or 10 trolls working for you, and each of them get one action, then the amount of power that you have by having minions or companions underneath you, provided they're not heavily NPC oriented. So if the GM has a lot of control over stuff, obviously we know that NPCs can be a great addition to the game. But when you're bringing in more player control, we can't have unlimited power on secondary style characters, which is why all of our secondary characters are less powerful by design from game balance. Um, you can do whatever you want in, in, in your individual game, but that is purposeful uh, to put that in there. Uh yeah, so Milo, yeah, it's just why couldn't we call it the Discami Emporium? Because a Discami doesn't mean anything to anyone uh, other than well, a couple thousand people. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had the name of the, the the products or the game lines out there that it could bring people's memory. Tri-Set System, not as much, but we knew we couldn't call it the Best of Emporium because Absolute Power is going to be part of there and regular tri Core. So we were looking ahead whenever we called the tri Emporium rather than the Best of Emporium, but we wanted to have the game lines out there to make it easy to identify for people that aren't as familiar and maybe they're just getting into some of our tri games and if they just say Discami, well, they don't even associate Discami with Tristat or Discami with Bessem or Anime 5e. So that's why we kept that name there. Um, yeah, uh, HR, you, uh, thanks for making that comment about saying yes. You had mentioned about the scythe with Dex. Um, when you're looking at an Anime 5e particularly, and the reason why, because that's... Um, kind of the child of Dungeons and Dragons. And Dungeons and Dragons has a lot of really strict rules on what it can do for the Dungeons and Dragons style game balance. You know, they have a box like this. And I played in that box for many, many years. What we do with Anime 5e is we expanded the box. In the end, it's still 5th edition, but the box is now a lot bigger. So something about, uh, when you talk about the the scything and and whether it could be a dex roll versus a strength roll, there's a reason we we don't have a lot of prescriptions specifically on on what you can and can't do in the game. Yes, we follow traditional 5th edition rules because that's what people expect from an anime 5e. Um, So we do mention that that strength is being used for melee uh, attacks and dex is for ranged attacks. Or if you have a finesse weapon, it's melee, like a a small item. But someone might say, oh, well, I want a scythe and I wanted to use dex. Um, Sure, there's no reason you don't have to, you don't have to have it being strength. Just the same as if someone makes an attack and they're like, well, with my ranged attack, I want int to be the modifier not dex because uh, i'm using the intelligence of my of my mind to make the attack not my dexterous body it's the strength of my mind not even necessarily a mental blast but what they're doing i mean how many anime characters can you see that are like the the geeky nerdy types and yet they can fight really well in combat that is something while the, the flexibility of making changes is is so high and we don't consider breaking the mold or breaking the rules because the rules are what makes your game better people look at you know the rule if you've looked at the D rules on two weapon fighting it's like well you have to have a certain size of weapon in this hand a certain size in this hand unless you have this feat in terms of what you can do 
It's like, yeah, but in D&D, you might have characters with two katanas. And why not do that? And why couldn't you have two mauls or two lances? Maybe you're, you're riding around your horse and you're fight with two lances. That seems very cinematic and dramatic uh, and very character focused. And so we, yes, we obviously have some things that would account for that, but we go beyond what would be traditionally accepted in standard fifth edition by giving a lot of flexibility uh with uh making changes and so yeah if you want to go ahead and do that no problem uh i like the idea of getting to yes it's not for breaking the rules i know i know people and i enjoy doing it as well about thinking how do you how do you min max how do you completely optimize what is the best way to squeeze every single advantage out of something on a, in a creation and i think as a thought experiment it's great as a character design, I think it's terrible. <laughs> it's not something I enjoy doing at all. I create the character I want to play, and I don't create the, the complete opposite. Like, I'm going to be a barbarian, and I want to have four strength. No, I'm, I'm not going to get, like, create a character that doesn't make any sense. But optimization just has no interest to me as a player. Um, and so when you say, well, I want to, to have a charisma-based melee attack, sure, why not? Like, that's pretty awesome to do, and uh, it's very anime. You can do that in anime five e. You just you know the players wanted say yes when it's when it's a good story. You don't have to say yes when it's min maxing, uh, when it's ultimate optimization. That's not saying yes. Uh, that's that's not fun. D and D is not a, or, or anime five e or fifth edition or Bessem. None of them are about winning the game. It's about playing the game. And uh, winning, there's, there's no winning. You're, you're winning if you're having fun and creating the characters you want. So, yeah, I, I saw that example that you'd, you'd posted uh, about the scythe. And, yeah, it's precisely the type of uh, you know, game that I want to play as well. Uh, all right, so uh, that's uh, all the questions that have come through right now. We didn't have, you know, a huge number of viewers, as, as not expected. Uh, we'll be posting this video a little bit later. I kind of think that's most of the things I wanted to talk about, just to kind of get the, the word out a little bit about what we're doing and what our plans were for our future lines and uh, let you know, you know, we're working hard. Robin is doing a great job. You know, I'm keeping him super busy uh, th them um, with all the work that we're setting their way. And we are producing the best work we can. We're a small company. Uh, we have some amazing fans that are that are backing us up so thank you for all the support you've shown us in the past and and the support you're going to show us in the future we greatly appreciate that uh we know that there's a lot of options you have in the gaming market and uh you know every dollar every player that you send our way uh really helps us produce more work for you so thank you very much for that um certainly follow us on our socials i mean if you're here you're probably aware of us on facebook but um you know the the I guess the, the annoyance of social media is because everyone's in a different place. If we post something on Facebook, we probably have to post something on Twitter and maybe Instagram and probably Discord. And if you're on all of them anyway, then you're seeing the same message from us uh, multiple times. But we have to reach people in, in all their different ways. But uh, please do follow us on our socials. And if you want to be involved in the community, most of our most of our social media is a push. So here's stuff from us pushing it to you. And yeah, you can have some discussion in the Anime 5e group or the Absolute Power group, Bessem group on Facebook. But a lot of the stuff that we have for social media is pushing to you. The big difference is Discord. If you want to engage with other players, Discord is the place to hang out. We, um, you know, I interact occasionally with people. And yes, we have an announcement channel where I push information out. Uh, but it is uh, a really great place for you to engage with other people in the community. Far easier, I find, than any other social media, whether it's Facebook or um, Twitter. I mean, I love Facebook. I'm on Facebook all the time. But I think for the for the community of gamers, Discord is the way to go. So uh, I saw HR posted a link. It's really simple. Discami.ca slash Discord. That's a permanent link that we have set up as well. Uh, join it if you haven't. Uh, we'd love to see you there. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks for all the backing. I hope you spread the word about our Anime 5e Kickstarter. We'd love to have you on board and uh, work through some of those scratch goals. And in more than two weeks, it'll be over. And then, uh, and then that closed down and we're on to the next stuff from there. So uh, thanks again for tuning in tonight. You make this all the worthwhile. I hope uh, you got some information from it. And if you have any questions, just uh, drop us a line. Uh, info at uh, Thanks very much.